You're in the wrong class. All right. So I, I want to hear that story in a few. But listen, to everybody, before you start writing, can everybody see what's on the right side of the board? It says uh, area revision, area of a kite, and area of a rhombus. The reason why I have it on the board is because from now on, if you're doing your homework and you don't have the notes from the topics I taught that day, I won't mark your homework. Okay? So on three pages, you're going to put at the top of the page area of revision. On the next page, you're going to put area of a kite. And then on the third page, you're going to put area of a rhombus. Below that page now, you're going to put the notes I gave you. And then if I gave you questions to do for homework, that is where you do the homework questions. So when you take pictures of your homework, your notes should be there as well. Sorry for the chime. I don't know why so many persons love my class. All right, let's begin now. Cameras on, everybody, cameras on. Let's begin. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to look back over one of the questions I gave you for homework, all right? And let's say, here are the squares that were in this. Wait, can you, can you repeat that for me? I can't hear you. I think I'm having internet issues. I heard something about three pages. Okay, let me repeat it one last time. On the right side of the board, here are the three topics we're going to learn today. So, when you're submitting your homework, you're going to take a picture with three pages having these topics at the top. So, if I gave you this topic first that we're going to learn, you must put the notes I gave you, then the questions I asked you to do for homework. On the second topic, on the second page, you put area of a kite as the topic header. Then you put your notes and the course and, and the questions I gave for homework. And the same thing for the last page, which is area of a rhombus. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Good. So, what am I saying? If you submit homework with all the notes, I'm not marking it. Because I don't want you to do the exam at the end of the term and you don't know what you're doing. Alright? No more zeros, no more forties, only eighties and hundreds. Wait, sir, I have a question. What did you say? I have a question. Yes, what's your question? Quickly. Uh, I was looking at the schedule and it says you don't have midterm exams. Is that right or is that wrong? I'll, I'll, I'll show you the schedule because I think that's not the correct one. I'll, I'll send it to you. Just remind me after class, alright? Can I see the topics again? Area, area revision. Area of a kite and area of a rhombus. So go on three pages and write those for me. Three empty pages. Sir, yeah, but what if the they take up more than one page? Trust me, they won't. Trust me, they won't. I've mapped it out. Even if it does take more than one pages, you're just gonna put the topic on the next page and continue. Wait, sir, what is the difference here? Area of a rhombus, area of a kite, and area of something another. No, area revision. So this is area revision. Area of a kite is what we're gonna do next, and area of a rhombus. We really need to begin. So let's let's start. Right. So here is the part, here's the first part of the homework we got from last week Thursday. Right. Inside the problem that we had some squares. For example, here was the first square. Right. The first square was like that. Let me highlight it. Say so it was not a full square, rather a portion of a square. Good. Let's draw the next one. Here was the next square that you had to draw. So, so far, we have two small squares that are not actually full squares. Then we have another square that was a full square. So we go right here. So that's one full square so far, right? Then you have another one that went all the way up. That's two. That's three. So, so far we have one, two, three. That's four, right? That's five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then finally, you have six. Everybody following? 
No, you might realize that you have a little piece of square over here, and you have another piece of square that is right here. But what do you do? Here's what you're going to do. You're going to take your pencil, your pen, or your finger, and you're going to highlight every time you see a full square. So George, this is the first full square. One, two, three, and six four squares. Three, four, five, six. What does that six represent? Four squares. Right. So here if one centimeter cube, sorry, square, sorry, if one centimeter square was one square, write that for me. If one centimeter squared was one square, therefore we have six full centimeter squares. We have six full and put in brackets six centimeter square area in our in our pilot graph. But we're not finished. We can't leave out these portions right here. Isn't that so? We can't, we can't leave them out because there's still some area in our parallelogram, even though they're not full squares. So what we need to do is that we're going to look and see which part are identical. Look at this one now. Doesn't this look like half of a square? Uh, it should. It should look like, but my it doesn't. But this is actually a half of a square. Alright? Look at this part over here. Because it is a sketch, it might not look like it, but this is another half of a square. Sir, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add these two halves, and I'm going to call it one centimeter cube square. Okay. Everybody got that? Yes, sir. Same thing for this one. This is half, should be half, this is another half. But because I can't really draw that perfectly, they don't look like halves, but when you add them now, that means we have six centimeter square, square plus a half centimeter square plus another half centimeter square. Then we have two more down here plus a half centimeter square plus another half centimeter square. Alex. Alexander. 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 Alexander Pico, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Right. How are you doing today? You okay? Hmm? Are you okay? Yeah. All right. Look at this one, now, Alex. What is a half plus a half? Uh, half plus a half. Yes. One. One. So these two would give you yeah. one centimeter square. Let's write that for me. Remember, this is actually a part of your homework. If you don't have this, you're gonna get no mark for your homework and you should submit. Let's look at the next half, Alex. We have another half plus a half, it's gonna be one centimeter square. So we're going to add those two together plus the original six centimeter square that we had from the full squares. So what is six plus one plus one, Alex? Ooh. Six plus one plus one is eight. So that means the area of this parallelogram, Alex, is eight centimeters square. Did that out for me? Any questions? So what are we doing? An area of what again? Area of a parallelogram. This is area of a parallelogram revision. Right. But I taught you three ways to get the area in a parallelogram. I taught you the formula. I taught you this method, and then I'm going to show you what we taught last, which was the rectangle method. Isabella, do you remember the rectangle method? Hmm? Isabella, do you remember the rectangle method? 
Let's look at that. Your camera is lagging in and out, sir, so like. Alright, no worries. Let's see. Let's see. Before you reset, before you reset, can you send me a picture on WhatsApp? Sure. Because I can't. No problem. They're having internet issues. Okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. Let me take a picture. WhatsApp group, sir, so. Yes. But, I'm going to delete the pictures after 10 minutes. So if you didn't write the notes after 10 minutes, you are in trouble. Alright. Delete it tomorrow, sir. No? Like if I delete it tomorrow, if I delete it tomorrow, then that means I can't do it for everyone. I want to make sure you guys are actually taking the time out and writing these notes off. Okay, Google, start a 10 minute timer. Really? I don't know. So, in 10 minutes, the picture will be deleted. If you haven't taken it off by then, you are in big trouble. Let's continue now. We're going to look at the next type of area, which was drawing it as a rectangle. Rectangle went easy. Alright, so, let me just use the same picture. I don't want to really ruin this picture. Let me just use the same picture. Alright, look at this one right Vehicle. Here are my squares. Let's say I didn't want to count them. What else could I do to find the area? Please tell me I'm recording. Okay, yes, I'm recording. Whew, I was so scared. Let's say that I have the squares inside the parallelogram. How could I find the area without counting the squares? I taught you the rectangle method. So let's say okay, first. All right, let's hear from Benjamin. So you draw a line, there I go, there's my line. Um, oh wait, uh, wait. Uh, can I, sir, can I share my screen? Um, sure, no, it's done. Draw a line from where, okay? Okay, from N to, to down. <laughs> from N down. to <laughs> from N Very to down? Straight down. Straight down. Alright, after I draw a line from N to down, yes? from N to the M and I think it is one, two, three, I think it's four. Okay, I see the direction no. you said. You should draw a line. Minutes. But let me help you out, Benjamin, let me help you out. So yes you're going to draw a line, but not from M, you're going to draw a line extending outwards from M. Let me give you an example. So look at something now. Using from K, I'm going to draw a vertical line. So Benjamin oh, uh, okay. There you go. Uh, is that what you're trying to say, Benjamin? Well, you could have... Uh, the, the way I do it is... It's kind of similar, except you, you do that after. Okay. Or you... Right. Here, That's you do it. But, but look at this now. Once you draw that green line, right? You're going to extend the end to meet this line. Right? Doesn't that form a little rectangle side right here? And what we're going to do now, we're going to go to L and repeat the same thing. But what Benjamin said, which is just to draw a line going straight up. Going straight up. Alright? So, what you realize is that we now have a rectangle being formed. Does anybody see the rectangle? Here's our rectangle. Clear? And what we're going to do now is that we're going to now extend these to form fully fledged shapes. And now we're going to count how many squares we have now. So when you're counting the amount of squares, you would just find the area of the rectangle and that will give you the area of the parallelogram, so to speak. So right this way, the area of the rectangle the area of this rectangle So I'm adding up in top of what's up, sir Alright, let me give you that one The area of the rectangle is equal to the area 
of the parallelogram. is equal to the area of the parallelogram. Alright? So, the parallelogram that I have said has more than um, um, six boxes. Is that okay? Repeat that for me. Oh, yeah. Okay, I got you. Right? But because this is a sketch, it's not going to be perfect. But in your exercise that you got here, those are exactly perfect. Alright? So let's check it out. Look at this quickly for me. What was the formula for the area of a rectangle? What was the formula? Uh, length times width. Length times width. Excellent. Good job. So therefore, in this scenario, if I know the length, which is KL, so length times width, would be my area for the parallelogram therefore which would be KL KL multiplied by NK Any questions? Sorry, can you send us on the WhatsApp group? Sure it's not, it's not very clear. Right. Sure. I'll send you a picture on WhatsApp. Alright, so that was area revision. Now we're going to move on to the area of a kite. Okay, why would it be so? In a way. In a way. You're counting squares and halves and halves. Yes, so you would be counting squares, but remember, when we were learning the parallelogram, we learned a formula first, right? So you didn't have to just count the squares. You could calculate it, you could count the squares, or you could form it into a rectangle. Now, with the kite, we're going to learn the formula first. That's the difference. So here's the formula for the area of a kite. So go to the new page for me. And write the area of a kite. Okay. Here we go. Area of a area of a kite. What is a kite? It is a flying thing that flies in the sky. Right. Okay. Good. No, Aliana. Aliana here? I'm here, sir. Okay, good. Good. How many sides do you think a kite has? If I, if I want to sketch a kite, right? Isn't it, isn't it, isn't it a quadrilateral or a quadrilateral? Quadrilateral. What is a quad, how many sides does a quadrilateral have? So Benjamin is helping you out. So, Aliana, how many sides does a quadrilateral have? Four sides. Four sides. So, you're going to write A kite is a four sided figure, or a quadrilateral. A kite is a quadrilateral. Is a quadrilateral. Alright? Okay. But we can define it in first. Let me give you a sketch of a cat. One, two, three, four. Wouldn't that be a cat? It's a sideways rectangle. <laughs> Alright. Look at this one. Let me label it. A, B, C, D. No. When we were doing the parallelogram, I used these lines to explain that they have parallel lines. So look at this now. I'm going to put a line through, 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 and through. What does those lines mean? It means they're parallel. Right? Which means basically they're identical. 
right? Yes. Okay. We call this the fact that when you put a line in the so put a little imaginary line through, just like that. Don't you see two triangles being formed? Look at it. We have a triangle ACD and then we have a triangle ABC. You guys see that? So, Wait, is it a is it a square? No, a triangle is a triangle. So so we can say therefore a kite is formed by two. A kite is formed. Wait. Is it uh, are all those are all the sides supposed to be even? Repeat that for me. Are all the sides supposed to be even? Yes, all the sides are even. That's why we have the identical oh. lines. Uh, okay. Okay, okay I see. Stop timer. Okay, let's continue. So I'm gonna delete the first picture now. First picture is being deleted. Good. Okay, Google. Deleted. Oh. Okay, Google. Google is off. Okay. So. Why are you deleting them? Because if you haven't taken it off, right? You you face punishment. That means you are doing your work before. Yeah. But I'm just making sure if I came back at it, if I got everything. A kite is composed of two triangles. It's composed of two scaling triangles. Matt is saying, sir, what is a scaling triangle? Anybody know? It has... Two acute angles and one obtuse. Okay. So we have different types of triangles. We have scaling, isosceles, equilateral. We're gonna go through them if you haven't gone to them, so don't worry. But basically you see two triangles being formed in a kite. And we call these triangles congruent. Alright? So put them back here for me. Congruent. That term is going to be your homework to look up. What does the term congruent mean? Uh, Don't answer it, that's your homework. That's question uh, one. Question one. So that's what I said when I say on the E, you're going to be given homework questions to fill out. Alright? How do you spell congruent? C O N. G R U E N T. C O N G. Wait, 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 wait. Don't answer. Remember, it's your homework. Who's answering? Don't answer. It's a homework question. Wait, sir, how do you spell that again? Alright, look at this woman now. <laughs> to calculate now the area of a triangle would be to find out the area of the distance inside of this diagram. So let's calculate it first by using a formula. Alright? Oops. So, here is the formula to calculate. Oh, yes? Wait, can you repeat that for me? Okay, I wrote a homework with a monarchy down yet. Oh, oh, okay. Let me write it down. Find out the definition of congruent. So look over here for me, I'll put it over here. I'm sorry, I'm gonna spell it. Con, C O N G R U E N T. What are congruent triangles? Oh, the concrete. Let's check it. It's not the word, it's a sentence. There you go. Right. What is the sentence? The sentence with sentence. Oh, the archite is a com composite of two something. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Archite. So look for me. Let me write it again. Archite is composed. Of two, of two scaling triangles 
that are congruent. And your homework is going to be the final definition of the word congruent. Alright, I'll take a picture and show you after. Now look at this for me now. Let's look at how to calculate the area of a, of a kite. So, let me just quickly draw it up a bit Look at this now from your body. Here is my kite. Good? If I was to talk about this kite, I give it some details, some characteristics, I could firstly name the points, the four points. Alright? So let's do that firstly. I want you to draw a very thin line going down. Thin line going down. Alright? And we're going to call this distance that goes across from here to here B, which stands for base. Alright? So this is the base of this kite. Alright? Stands for base. B, and put in bracket, base. Alright? Now, for the distance that goes across above here, I want you to draw a line that goes up. Up. Wait, but that's like, that's kind of big, that's, that's bigger. Right? And we're gonna call this D. Yes? It's, it's bigger. Oh, the kite? Yeah. It's bigger than the, the kite. No, no, that's what. I just read you mine. You don't have to read your yours. Still use the same kite that you have. Understand? Right? And for this side over here, let's say I want to distance of here to here, we're going to call that. Look for me. We're going to call this D, capital D. This point to this point is capital D. And then over here now, this point going downwards is going to be called L for length. So two things should stand out to you. L and D. But why? It's because they're capital. So we have a length and we have a distance. D. So here's what we're going to say. The area of a kite the area of a kite area of a kite Alright? Eh? Can we redraw ours as well? Can you put that for me? Can we redraw ours as well? You don't have to, but this looks like you have this on top of it. Alright? So the area of a kite is given by the formula A, which is equal to a half L times B. So where would be L? Here times here. Or a half common D times capital D. That's the formula? Yeah. Any of these two. A equals MC squared. <laughs> Did you just say E equals MC squared? Yes, can you read that out loud, please? Can you read that for me, Isabella? Can you read it out loud, please? Because I can't do this. A is equal to a half a length times base or distance common D times capital D. A half. Alright, let's do a quick example. Wait, sir, I need to copy this down. Alright, I can't see that. Alright, let me take a picture and post it in the group. Let me take a picture, check the group for me. Yeah, check the group for me quickly. 
We're going to do a practice question now. Can I erase the board and all the pictures in the group? Is it good for me? Here is a practice question. So, let's say, for example, that I draw a vertical line going down and a horizontal line going across to make it look more like a kite. And let's say I told you this part is 3 centimeters. This tiny little part up here is 3 centimeters. Right? This part going across is 4 centimeters. So pay attention for me. It might be blurry, so I'm, let, me, let me put it a little closer. Alright, can everybody see the board now? Yes, sir. Alright, so I am telling you that this point from here to here is 3 centimeters. From here to here. Understand? And then I'm telling you from here to here is 4 centimeters. Okay? And then now, I am telling you from here all the way downwards to here is 12 centimeters. And then I said from here to here is another 4 centimeters. Let me take a picture of that and post it in the group. Wait, what? <laughs> yes, I'm so confused. Alright, check the picture for me. It might be a bit too blurry on my screen. Can you see it now? Look yeah, from where to where is 12 centimeters? From this point down here. Uh -oh. Well, 12 centimeters. Well, there's a there. I thought every single side was just is equal. Wait. Check the picture as you're sitting in the group. Can you guys see that picture? That's the accurate kite. Can we show you on the screen? There you go. Uh, right? So, yeah, that's how a kite would look. My body of mind showed you guys off. Alright? So let me just help you to visualize that a little bit more. Yeah. Let me put this down a little bit more. Jesus, stop. Yes, George? Wait, can you repeat that for me, George? Your kite, your kite. Oh yeah, my bad if it was throwing you off. My bad, my bad. So, now that you get the measurements, let's break the question apart. First of all, look at D for me. D is the distance that goes from here all the way across here. So my question is, D centimeters, DCM. What would that be equal to? Annalise. Annalise, are you there? Oh, DCM. Oh, that's, oh God. Annalise, can you hear me? See? I always check and see if you guys are hearing. Jude, turn the camera on for me. Yes, Annalise, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Right. If D centimeters is going to be the distance from here going all across to here, what is that distance based on the kite? What plus what? 4 centimeters plus 4 centimeters. Excellent. So 4 centimeters plus 4 centimeters will tell me what D is. Because from here to here is 4, and then from here to here is 4. That will give me how much? 8 centimeters. Good job, Annalise. Next question goes to Aliana. Aliana, are you there? Yes, sir. What is capital D centimeters? So the distance of here down is here. Can you repeat that for me? I can't see the board. Oh, check the WhatsApp for me. I sent the pictures there as well. It is... Let me put it a little bit closer. 
No excuse. There you go. Perfect HD 4K resolution. Right? What is it? Uh, so it looks like 16K. It's like a website. <laughs> All right. There, there you go. So what's the total distance of D and Aliana? Can you put that for me? 24 centimeters. 24. How did you get 24? You add the 4 and 4 average. Oh, okay. I see your mindset. But let me help you a little bit here. Remember, D is strict, strictly, let me show you. D is strictly the height from the top going down. The top going down. Right? So from this point, what's the distance again? From here to here is what distance? Oh. No, no, no. From here to here. From the top up here. To, 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 to the... Whew. Man. This class could be the greatest class if only the camera quality was better. That's my fault. Okay, good. Can you guys hear me now? Can everybody hear me still? Ah. Aliana, we're still with you. What was the distance from here to here? Three centimeters. Okay, good. Three centimeters plus what's the distance from here to here? This point right here. What's that distance? Three centimeters. So three centimeters plus what? Four centimeters. No, it's not going to be four. The four is going across over there. The distance that's going from here to down here, isn't it 12 centimeters? Everybody see that? Hello? Yes, sir. Aliana, see that? Aliana, you see? So, from here to here is three centimeters, then from here to here, is 12 centimeters. Please make sure you see it. Let's continue now. Right, welcome back everybody. So, therefore, Ariana, what would be my answer? What is 3 centimeters plus 12 centimeters? 15 centimeters. 15 centimeters, right. Good. Now, now that we got that out of the way, can somebody remind me of the formula? What's the formula for the area of a kite? That involves these two, that involves these two. Half small d, half big d. Good. Half small d multiplied by the big d. Right? What was the small d again? Half times what? Eight. Eight. Good. Multiplied by what was the big d? Fifteen. Good. Now let's simplify. What is a half of eight? Four. Four. So we're gonna say eight times one is eight. Eight divided by two is four. And my final question goes to one person I haven't heard from. This question goes to the always present Corey. Corey, can you hear me? Sir. What is 4 times 15? 60. 60. Now, Corey, the biggest question of the day. The touchdown is on you. If you score this, everybody wins. What does the 60 centimeters squared represent? And you get to be. Repeat that. I don't say anything. Yes, Corey, what, what does the 60 centimeters squared represent? Oh, sir, aren't we finding the area or something? Uh, yes, we are finding the area of the kite. Good job. Find the area of the kite. So this... Sir, you said something mildly inappropriate just a while ago. <laughs> so, the total distance inside of this would have therefore been 60 centimeters squared. So, we scored a touchdown, basically. 
because we now know the distance inside of that kite. Alright? Let me take a picture of the board for you. And now here is your homework question. We have four minutes. Take this picture off for me. Yeah, what's homework? I don't know what homework is. Homework is something that students homework. love. Have you taken that picture? Homework. homework. All right, here's your homework question now. Let me quickly erase this for you. Oh, my God. 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 Right. You guys are getting rowdy, so I'm going to just mute everybody for a second. Alright, there we go. You're getting rowdy. I know you're excited about the work. And well, that's good. But remember, we have students that are not so excited. And to make them understand, we need to be patient with each other. Alright? There we go. So, here's your homework question now for me. Alright? Let's say that D, capital D, let me erase this part. Here's your homework question. Capital D is equal to 15, my bad, that's the wrong kind. Here's one moment. Here we go. Here's your kite. We're going to say up here is equal to 3 centimeters. Right? Here is 4 centimeters. Here is 6 centimeters. And here is also 4 centimeters. Alright? Use the formula. to find the area and here's the formula a half small d multiplied by the big d that's the formula you should use alright so that's the end for this class unfortunately we didn't get to go to the area for rhombus but we now know that's where we're going to pick up the next class. So I'm going to get the homework wrong. Why is that so? Uh, because I don't understand it 100%. Alright, where did I lose you? Between the laughing, where did you, where did I lose you? Uh, you lost me way before that. I, I didn't really understand what you're doing when you put the rectangle around it. That, were, were you here last class Thursday? Class, class, sir. Day. And so we went to the rectangle. Uh, I, I think so. Alright, so I'm going to send you the class recording for that class because there was some homework that you should have completed. If you haven't completed the homework, right? Oh, is that the one with the rhombus? I mean, with the parallelogram? Yes. Oh, oh, oh yeah, I did that. Okay, good. This one, exactly. You see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, good. Good. So that was what the, the homework was about. Find the area of a parallelogram using the rectangle method. All right. Oh, uh, so this is basically the same exact thing. Yeah. No. Oh, uh, okay then. Never mind then. Yeah. Now we're looking at the area of a kite, and to practice it, you're going to make sure you have your notes, and then you do this question. Because if you send me just the answer to this question, I won't mark it. All right. This is invalid if you only give me this as your submission. You should have all the notes from area revision and then the notes from area for cut. Alright? Before we go, are there any questions? It no sense this time for lunch. Alright, so have a great day everybody. And I'll see you in the next class.